Hi, my name is Abby Shamar, and I'm a DPT student at Elon University. And I'm going to look at iontophoresis today. And the study that I chose, um, it's called a randomized study comparing corticosteroid ejection to corticosteroid iontophoresis for lateral epicondylitis. Um, this is a prospective randomized trial with therapeutic level two evidence. And my target population I was looking for was older adults with lateral epicondylitis, but this target population in the study was 18 to 70 years old. Um, they didn't use iontophoresis in the study, they used uh, the ionto patch, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. It's the same mechanism still. Uh, the treatment group received ionto patch with 10 milligrams of de dexamethasone placed in the reservoir. Some of them have little plastic reservoirs on top of it. This one does not have a reservoir. You would just put the medication, depending on what kind it is, in the positive or negative electrodes, and since we're using dexamethasone. I'll be placing 10 milligrams of the medication on the negative side and water on the positive side. Um, and I place on the, they place it on the patient and it stayed on for two days. So pretend that I'm putting, I put my medication, the dexamethasone on the positive side, water in the negative. And I wanna apply it to the lateral epicondyle where the patient's experiencing pain. So you palpate for pain, place, the patch on and for the ionto patch they used in the study the patch has a switch that you would turn on but this one um, once everything gets in the circuit it turns on by itself and it wasn't specifically stated in the study that the patch was placed over the lateral epicondyle but it was implied from what they said that it was placed over where they were experiencing pain and a second patch was applied two to 10 days later if um, after the removal of the first patch, they were still receiving pain and they could not advance to the next phase of therapy. Uh, there, the protocol was uh, eight weeks divided into three sections consisting of rest, mobility, and strengthening. In the rest phase, the patient was treated with one of the three medications, which was either dexamethasone via antifresis, as this patient is demonstrating, dexamethasone via um, intramuscular injection or triamcin alone with intramuscular intratendon injection. Um, after that phase, they'd move on to the mobility phase where they would be stretching um, to increase range of motion. So either flexor or extensor uh, stretches of the, the wrist. And then after that phase, they were progressed to the strengthening phase, which pa patients were taught standardized exercises to increase strength um, and overall function. And the phase, the strengthening phase began after subjects were free of medication for 24 hours. The, uh, this study found that dexamethasone via the antiphoresis produced short-term benefits because for this group, grip strength and unrestricted return to work were significantly better than the other two groups. Mm -hmm. The pain ratings were also statistically improved with all groups with the iontophoresis improving at a faster rate. Um, and after reviewing this article, I would use this in the clinic if I was treating somebody with lateral epicondylitis, just for the fact that it frees up uh, meaningful clinic time. You can put the patch on and you can still continue stretching and doing strengthening at the same time. Whereas if you're in the clinic using the regular traditional iontophoresis, you pretty much have to leave the pads on them and they just sit and wait for the medication to go through. And this way you can get more done and they can have this on at home too. And that's it.